reason to talk to you and a few other people who I've met I mean, in my life is to talk to people who I believe to be influencers. And I really mean it. It's not meant to be a compliment or anything. It's what I really mean. So I have seen you multiple times influencing people in front of my eyes. So it's not just something I heard or read in the book or textbook. So for me to talk to you, the key value from this interview is for me to understand you, understand the way you do this. Not just what the textbook says or not what you read, but how you uh, channel your, you know, energy, how you reach people, how you um, impact their lives. And, and you can take this through anecdotes or examples or whatever way you want. So that's the key intent of the interview. But of course, there are questions. So I'll, I'll, those questions may help us frame the conversation. So the first one, Michael, is actually a very broad one, and I'm just asking you to define for me what you believe or who you believe to be an influencer. What does influencer mean to you? Okay. Um, for me, and now, the first thing that comes to mind is the current uh, way that the term influencer is being used. And this this is highlighted mainly in the social media universe. So, to put it simply, and in the most you know common street kind of definition, an influencer is somebody who is present, heavily present in the social media, and who has a considerable number of followers. Um, but if you take it deeper than this, uh, I think. The world, um, the world can can be can be explored in a much more meaningful way. When we talk about influencers, for me, influencing is just a process. It's just a mechanism. If we're talking about the word itself, because influence, it, it's also related to the word creating impact. But it's it's a, it's it's a neutral term and it's a very general term. Um, for me, when it comes to at least my definition in leadership and strategy and the way I handle uh, this word in my universe, we need to work on this term. So, when somebody makes a joke, tells you a joke, and you laugh, he's just influenced you. Uh, if somebody told you a sad story and you cried, he's influenced you, right? Yes. Uh, if somebody has uh, convinced you to buy a certain product, he has influenced you. If somebody convinced you not to buy, right, an influ has influenced you. So any kind of intervention that would create an impact uh, on another person, whether it is impact in thought or behavior, somebody change your mind, somebody uh, helped you look at things a different way. So an influence has happened, an impact has happened. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And, and this happens through a certain kind of medium of communication. It could be a quote you read in a book, could be a line you hear in a movie, could be uh, a speech uh, you listen to, could be a communication, you know, a conversation you had with, we have with somebody, could be a podcast, could be a YouTube video, whatever it is. So the medium is a communication medium. And when, they, when this communication medium, when the message goes through this communication medium and it leaves a mark on this person, then we, we, we can call this uh, an influence mechanism has happened, impact has happened. However, so this is sort of a simple way of talking about the mechanics of this. However, we haven't talked about the purpose. We haven't talked about whether you have been impacted in a negative way or in a positive way. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I mean let's take the example of somebody who wanted to communicate to you an idea but you understood it in a different way and acted accordingly or you build your assumptions accordingly and this was a misunderstanding it wasn't it wasn't based on his actual understanding of what you meant you see what i'm saying so so in this case has this person influenced the other person or not even though there was a misunderstanding and instead of getting you a soft drink let's say he got you water or, or vice versa 
you see what I, well, instead of thinking this way he thought that way so so for me it's a technical term is it an important technical term of course it's an important technical term because it's 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 highly integrated with the process of communication in fact the per the reason we communicate is to influence each other's thinking right that's the purpose of communication otherwise what's the purpose of communication right why are you communicating um but but in the context of how people apply it and in the context of this technical process making meaning uh, in people's life i think we have to take it one dimension beyond the technicalities beyond the physical element beyond the technique of this beyond the process part and put it in the frame of how does this serve a certain purpose so some somebody who has a gun to your head or to my head is influencing me you understand what i'm saying yes so 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 what kind of influence are we talking about a terrorist is an influencer somebody who's convinced you to take drugs is influencing you somebody who's convincing you to drink is influencing you somebody is convinced to do something dangerous and silly and break the law is influencing you somebody at the same side at the, at the opposite side who is convincing you to do something constructive positive helpful you know something that would help you create a positive impact is also influencing you that's why for me the 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 major part of this conversation is a purpose conversation rather than the technique conversation the technique conversation is valid and it's very important and could be studied and there's an entire universe of science about the mechanics of how you do that different you know depending on the medium the tv has different techniques to influence people you know the advertisement all the concept of advertisement is based on influencing people and they have 20 seconds or 30 seconds of doing that and people pay hundreds sometimes millions and tens of millions to do that especially you know in important seasons and important events and they use yeah you know so so much sophisticated techniques of psychology sociology i mean you name it just to create the influence uh, or the impact that they want to create so that's an entire universe and has to be greatly respected and admired and great minds are thinking about this day and night to refine this process you know radio tv social media and you name it even social media linkedin instagram facebook you know, Twitter, each of them has different techniques that you need to use to, if you want to influence. And, and even if you want to post a picture, each one has a different, you know, size of picture. So it's a very complicated thing. It has to be mastered if you want to have impact in the way you're communicating. But for me, in my universe of, of, uh, of, of leadership and strategy, uh, the, and the way I define strategy is mobilizing people and organization to go through an ad adaptive process, right? So that they can solve their problem and create opportunities. Influence is a, an important element, but it's just a technique in this process. You see what I'm saying? And there are some great minds in leadership they summarize the entire word leadership as leadership is about influence great minds that need to be respected right they deserve our respect but again respectfully i disagree because if you limit leadership our mobilization with just influence then how do you distinguish manipulation from leadership you know then how do you distinguish propaganda from you know um, sending a pure and authentic message so so that's why the element of purpose has to come into into the into the into the picture now uh, do i seek to influence people in my interactions with them you know when i write my books and when i uh, give speeches and when i hold um, you know workshops and seminars and uh, and uh, leadership simulations of course i would do that but i do it as with complete focus on the purpose that I want to create, right? And while I'm doing that, of course, I'm trying to use the right medium so that I can create this impact that I want. But to, to, to focus on the influencing part without taking it to the wider dimension of why you're doing that, for what purpose, and what kind of influence and impact you want to create, 
uh, it's a dangerous mechanism because either it takes us into you know it becomes a weapon that could be used by uh, through manipulation or it keeps it in the realm of just the technicalities of how you communicate and influence and that's also important i'm not undermining that but i'm trying to put it in a big picture that it is inf influence for a purpose if you want to talk about you know uh, to talk about a book or an initiative that would help people have a better life okay okay i think i think i'm not surprised by what you just said because that's what you've been well definitely when i was your student that's what you talked about and i think every time i listen to you at different sibf events the, the purpose of purpose driven sort of leadership is something you talk about so i guess that's along the same lines it is it is but 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 let's i mean i'll, I'll give you an example uh, sometimes in social media i hear that so and so is an influencer why because this person or has like you know hundred thousand two hundred thousand whatever multiple yes. thousands yes. of people following and then I look at the content and I when I see the content I, I actually see damage I mean in, in the sense that I see this people the this person uh, through the content that he or she are you are, are spreading or broadcasting through social media is actually creating damage because it's helping people or it's pushing people to to have a shallow way of thinking to look at life in a yeah. in a shallow way i mean all these in quote unquote influencers on social media who are just bombarding you every day on you know how to become a millionaire become a millionaire become a millionaire have this rich, buy this fancy car why you have to do that right so what they're doing is that they are shaping your value system in a way that sending the message if you are not rich if you don't consume the way we're suggesting to you to consume if you don't buy this car if you're not if you don't have these you know multiple digits of bank account then you're really worthless that's why we have to we have to take this um, carefully because we're talking about leaving impact and when you leave impact you have to have a sense of responsibility what kind of impact are you leaving? Am I giving you a weapon that you can use to defend your family or and defend your country? Or am I giving you a weapon that you're using to hurt other people? Yeah. Because we're not talking about passive we're not talking about passiveness. We're talking about how to optimize the way you impact other people's life. That's great. You've just become more lethal. But in what way? Are you becoming a surgeon that cures yeah. Yeah, that cures a disease or are you cutting somebody into two pieces you know as an act of violence yeah yeah all right the direction of travel and the purpose of it, it defi in your view defines you know it, technicality of it could be the same but then what is it does it serve does it serve the good or does it serve the bad so i, I think i think that the, the, this course is clear to me so in the interest of time michael i'm, I'm conscious of your time as well let's move on to the next question and the next question is actually very specific to you so basically uh, who has the question? Who has been a bigger influencer in your life? And beyond just telling me, okay, my mother or my father, I would rather, if possible, if you, of course, uh, are willing to hear, to hear either a case, an anecdote, uh, 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 from your life, which describes sort of a moment which you remember as sort of real influential moment uh, through that person's either words or actions or behaviors, whatever, whatever it is. Okay, um, of course, father and mother are, uh, in general, in general, they, they are main influencers in most people's life. So that's sort of the, the classic scenario. Now, of course, yeah. could be it could be negative or positive. It depends on the circumstances. But, uh, yeah. but the nature of things is that, there is that um, fathers and mothers are major influencers because they handle us when we are most impressionable, when we are most subject to being influenced, you know, where we're just a blank page. And they fill up this page uh, before we have time to argue and, come on, on, and, and, and present counter-argument. So leaving that aside, in my case, um, in my personal case, I, am, I spend most of my time reading uh, and thinking about things. And when I read and think about stuff that interests me, like leadership, like strategy, like matters of philosophy, like uh, you know the enhancement of the human condition uh, these kind of things that interest me for other people might be boring but for me i mean that that's what that's what grabs my attention um, people who have influenced me are, are great thinkers and i want to start by the great spiritual 
you know, people, spiritual figures, people who wrote these sacred books in regardless of, you know, what region from the world you come from, right? For whether from Asia or the Middle East, whatever, whoever, you know, is uh, uh, developed the capacity to write these timeless books that talk to the core of the human psyche and, and, and talk to your heart and your mind and your soul, right? These people have had a major influence in my life. And I say, I, and I found that um, what they have said and the way they have, you know, they have interpreted reality, interpreted the world, has been a foundation of my thinking. And this came from all directions. So I'm not talking about a single spiritual source. I'm talking about multi kinds of spiritual source. And the reason I'm call calling it spiritual, because the word spiritual comes from the word spirit, right? And spirit means core. So these people have talked about the core issues of life. Now, a second layer is the great thinkers uh, of, uh, of life. I mean, the great philosophers, starting by, you know, the, the Plato's and the Aristotle's. And, the, and this was, of course, part of my education as well. So these people also who have contributed greatly to humanity have also influenced my thinking. And we take that through all the books and all the people that I you know I have been following in terms of their intellectual thinking. Some of the people who have influenced me most recently is are some of the professors that uh, are have impacted my life that that educated me or they were part of my educational system in my you know recent in my recent years. And I specifically uh, uh, re I would like to recall or remember one of my professors when I was at the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. His name is um, uh, Ron Heifetz, Ronald Heifetz. And he has written a number of books about leadership. And we became friends after spending time, you know, and me as his student, uh, and also after spending some time teaching uh, global leadership at the Kennedy School at Harvard. Um, I found his, Ronald, Ron Heifetz's interpretation and definition, understanding of leadership, which is something that is close to my heart, um, I found that uh, that message, uh, a message that talks to my soul, that talks to whatever constructs me as a person. And it's in sync and is in line with what I have been reading and what I have been, you know, um, learning throughout the course of my, you know, my, my upbringing. So since my childhood up to, you know, my current days. So if you wanted, uh, you know, um, names, um, uh, in general, as I said, the, I like I like this this quote that talks about the importance of reading um, and friendship and networking. It says, "Make these great thinkers your friends." So every time you take a book and you sit in your room and you're reading, you're actually talking or listening to a person who has, you know, uh, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, all of these people, you know, Shakespeare, all uh, Frankel, you know, C Carl Jung. And all these people who have spent, you know, geniuses who have spent years and years and years thinking about stuff and then putting them on paper. So, so when you read, you're communicating with them and they leave a huge mark uh, in your mind because they've spent years to come up with these concepts. So this, this, so this is, this is the, the, the historical context. Recently, as I said to you, um, I found that um, the Ronald Heifetz thinking about leadership uh, adaptive leadership, you know, holistic leadership, and the way it's tied to human nature, and the way that it is uh, should be directed to inf to to enhancing the human condition, that left a major influence in my life because it sort of it matched perfectly with everything else that I have been reading about and thinking about. Okay, okay, great, Michael. Thank you. So. Next question again drills down a little bit uh, towards your own person, not just who influenced you, but your own uh, your own influencing, if you will, model of life. And and this is where I need to um, I mean refer to what I've seen. So I, I just said to you in the beginning of our interview that uh, you were uh, one of my professors at Sela, and then I saw you multiple times uh, with Sela and Mela and and Sila and you know, all of these events, and every time. Every time, almost with every single group, without exception, you um, you manage to you know stir the crowd, to uh, shake them up, to even create a certain amount of and 
pardon my language, hatred towards you, you know, again, for the lack of a better word, or certain aggression against you, but then that aggression turns gradually, which for some people gradually, uh, into almost a, a fellowship, you know, or, or worship of, oh, well, Michael, 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 you know, let's talk to Michael, let's hear what Michael has to say. And again, I appreciate that you may feel that this sound a bit too much as a, as a compliment to you, but my, my point is really, as a more professional, ask you, what do you think uh, creates that mechanism, you know, which I'm sure you probably are aware of because you've been using it very successfully, that you can actually, to a, to a group of complete strangers, they don't know you. Well, they may have heard about you, but mostly they don't know you. You come and you do it, and then at the end you, you get the result that you want. Okay. Um, I have also seen you uh, with great admira admiration teaching uh, the mechanics and the, the science of you know, giving speeches and making presentations. Um, and I want to say that if you, if you, maybe if I stand in front of you and give you a presentation as a student, you know, giving a presentation to somebody who is an expert in communication skills, maybe, uh, not maybe, I'm sure I would fail on many counts because... <laughs> be, be, I'm not sure about that anyway. No, no, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure I will fail at many counts because... Uh, uh, now, having said that, I have taken some communication skills course. I remember taking some at Princeton University and when in during my times at Reuters, you know, I worked for Reuters for like 17, 18 years and some of the courses I took there were about communication skills and I'm into writing so also, so that's also part of communication. But I know what you're talking about, the kind of communication you're talking about when you stand in front of a crowd and you, you interact with them. Now, so if, if, you, if you judge me as per the, the book, you know, the standard, the Bible of how to communicate, how to communicate uh, as you know on stage as I said I would fail on many counts now what drives me what drives me is the following number one uh, I make sure that I know my material very 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 well so whatever I'm going to talk about I should know at least 10 times about that subject more than what I'm going to say in fact 10 is not even enough so I will never go to somewhere and stand on stage and speak if I don't, if I'm not sure that I am really mastered this subject to whatever I am capable of. Of course, there's no limit, it's infinite, knowledge is infinite, but at least I make that effort. That's number one. Number two, um, when I go on stage, before I go to stage, I put myself in this mindset that says, I have one chance maybe I'll have this only one chance to be in front of this audience or this person. Maybe one chance. And I know the power of words. I'll talk to you a little bit about the power of words now, a little bit, a little, uh, in a while. So what is it that I can do and say in a way that I would put all my being, everything I know, everything I have, every single cell of my body would be totally focused on giving this audience the best that I can give with absolute authenticity, absolute authenticity, underline this, even if it comes to breaking some of the rules, even if it comes to, you know, breaking some of the conventional rules of communication or how do you give a speech or whatever, how you stand or how you move. So that is secondary to me. I'm not saying it's not important, but what I'm saying is I put myself in a situation where I'm in a total state of flow, as the term says, right? Totally focused on it's about them, it's not about me. It's about them, it's not about me. So I sort of rip off my heart. I don't know if this is a strong uh, metaphor. And I try to give it to them with everything that I have because I feel it's a moral duty. It's a it's an obligation, uh, apart just from being, it's not just professional duty, it's a moral obligation that for people who came from all over the world to listen to you, to give you their attention, to give you their time, which is part of their life, that you absolutely give them the best that you have. So, so the combination of knowing your subject very well, 
and the combination of uh, focusing you know like a laser uh, light on on the interventions that you want to create you know exactly what you want to do right and uh, putting your entire soul uh, in the direction that it is completely about them this is not about you scoring uh, and putting up a show this is not about you you know scoring that you've impacted them you see what i'm saying it's not about winning it's not about winning uh, th there was a story about two people two 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 runners two runners who are almost equal completely equal theoretically in their cap in their in their capacities and they started running and one of them one over the other so they asked the expert why did this win over the other he said he said because the first one who lost he was thinking about winning the other guy who won he didn't think about winning all his focus was i'm going to run and run and run and run so everything went into running not even you know a small percentage of energy was going into how am i going to win so when I stand on that stage, the only thing I have in mind is how do I impact as many people as possible in the best possible way in line with the exact message that I want to, I want to make. Now, do I make some tactical mistakes when I do that? Of course, I make so many tactical mistakes, but I always overcome them and manage to how to go around them because I know my material, my intentions are good, right? My message is clear, right? And my priorities are also clear, which is which is them. And I keep myself, I give myself the, the luxury, the margin of blue being fluid so that I can adapt. You've seen my 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 interventions. And these are I mean intense interventions when I stand with this large audience and I make these provocative, you know, purposely provocative interventions. It is purposeful positive provocation so that I can get the best out of them in terms of the dynamics. I promise you, I have absolutely no idea how these things are going. I have zero idea because I know the material is heavy and I'm really aiming at their heart and their soul. And these are complete strangers. I mean, God knows what backgrounds they have. God knows what buttons I'm pressing, right? But because I'm ready, because I know the, 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 the material, I did my, my homework well. And because what's in my heart is nothing but good intention, and I have given myself this flexibility, I can manage during that complex situation. So it's a, it's, it's a combination of clarity of purpose, putting them at the beginning, being selfless about it, and knowing uh, your subject while maintaining you know, flexibility in the way you deliver the message. Okay, fantastic, Michael, that's very useful. So actually, almost if you flip this question, and, and I know this, I mean, feel free to ignore it if you want to, but I'm wondering if you had a situation, which I guess you probably had, when you wanted to influence someone, could be a person or could be a group of people, which yeah. I'm sure you have a huge history of working with different kinds of people around the world, where you actually failed to impact or influence him or her. And if, if you can't recall such a situation, would you, I mean, why? What went wrong? Um, as I said, Many times, I am sure, I am sure, almost every time I do some tactical mistakes when it comes to the technique of the delivery. I'm sure I do that. Uh, and I, I'm sure also that sometimes I make some tactical mistakes in the intervention itself, although with time and experience it becomes less and less and less. So when I have done all of that, and, and I really put my heart into it, and there's nothing else that I know what to, uh, to do, you know, I've, that's it. Everything I know is there in terms of content, in terms of delivery. And then the message doesn't get through to some people. Then I've learned this phrase, it's not for them. Okay. You understand? It's not for them. Yeah. Now, now. It, this doesn't mean that it's not for them because they're bad people. Maybe because it's not for them at this part of their life, at this stage of their life. Maybe they're not ready for this message now. Maybe this is the level of the message that they can tolerate now. Maybe, maybe their mind is somewhere else. You see what I'm saying? So, so does it happen sometimes? Of course it happens sometimes. It, but this is the nature of communication because you can't control 
what's happening in the other person's mind and a human being is a universe right you need many lifetimes multiple lifetimes to get to you know at least scratch the surface of what another person is all about so to put yourself under the pressure of having to control the message from you know the sender's part to the receiver's part right not only he got what you meant but he also interpreted the way you wanted and it created the desirable impact in him that's asking too much because you don't know what buttons you pressed you see what i'm saying you don't know what buttons you pressed the same message for others you know might be it might, might put them into tears but for other people you might have pressed the button they immediately put a you know glass wall and then they've disconnected now can you hold yourself responsible to that you can't and it's part of every uh, communication and that's normal why because you're dealing with you know uh, the, the universe of complexity that's called a human being but you have to accept that this is part of the process it happens if it is something that you can correct you should do it again I mean uh, and it happens with me a lot so they close a the door you open a window and you they close a the window you open another window and you come from this way and that way and then you you know you manage your pace and your tone and the intensity of what you're saying and use a different metaphor maybe the metaphor you used you know brought up memories press some buttons you know uh, for them uh, so you have to use all these tools so that you can score with them and even with that sometimes you're misunderstood or the message doesn't get through so taking responsibility for that on your own is too much however not learning from it also is also wrong so you learn and you learn and you ask and you try and as you with experience when you start when you start watching scanning the entire environment you're not just listening see, seeing seeing you're listening to their words you're looking at their clues in them you know the highest possible resolution and looking at their faces and consciously and subconsciously picking up all these signals so you're almost reading their minds almost huh, when you're interacting when you get to that level then you can manage to maneuver the message and you know and learn and adjust and and then make another intervention to create the impact that you want again having said that some people uh, they're not just just not ready and they either leave or they've shut down or they've had a you know a reverse effect um, that uh, you know if you have time maybe you can deal with it if you don't have time uh, maybe then then you have to let it go so it's uh, it's no I mean get the best movies you know Oscar winning movies the best plays get give i mean give give shakespeare to somebody some people might see it inspiring some other people might find it boring so you can't control this yeah yeah i appreciate uh, additional question which i think you've kind of covered but i want to make sure that i understand you correctly well, there's a famous expression honesty is the best policy so honesty is the best policy yeah. and basically everything else is just a game and manipulation so kind of leave it to the salesmen and, and marketeers so do you also subscribe to the idea of being honest is the best way to truly influence people honest sincere cordial yes so so I'll handle this question from um, I'll handle this question from um, a philosophical point of view and a spiritual point of view and talk about the power of words in some of the spiritual word, word uh, books many of them they talk about the power of the world you know uh, I mean in Quran it says the first word in Quran is read yes read that's the first word read. what do you read you read the word right yes. uh, and it also says that God created the word through the word through the power of the word correct in, Christ in Christianity is the same thing it's all about the word you know and in Judaism the same thing and in Hinduism and in in, in, in in Buddhism and many other religions the power of the world and whether you call it mythology or religion or spirituality whatever you want it is always emphasized that chaos becomes order through the power of the word you understand so the word the word has been emphasized over and over again as having you know power that people can't easily comprehend it's super powerful because through words mainly we communicate with people with each other this complex human being it is we use mainly the power of words to communicate right 
to make to comprehend these things and even now you know visual visual is very important of course as we know but the basis of that also is ideas that were based on on words now now why is this important because because the word has so much power in creating reality you know you say to your wife i love you she starts loving you right you say loving words to your wife or to your kids and you have a happy family you see you say poisonous words and you create a reality of having you know hell at home yes or no so because of the power of the word right saying that saying anything that that denies on honesty being the best policy is dangerous how because if you don't say if honesty is not the best policy so what are you doing are you justifying lying you see what i'm saying so yes. if honesty which is another way of seeing truthfulness right yes. if this is the nest the best is not the best policy so what are we saying so there is a second best choice there's another there's a better choice than truthfulness well out when the moment you go into truthfulness now you're in the realm of not being truthful and that's another form of lying now when you utter this untruthful word or you go into the space of lying right not being truthful you're playing with fire because you're creating a very dangerous reality because that's the nature of the power of the word so is honestly the, the best policy is it's not only the best policy it should be the only policy because anytime you deviate from that underline the only because anytime you deviate from that you are eventually sooner or later going to pay a very heavy price for that so when i talk about honesty being the best policy right as as one of the fundamental truths of life i'm not just talking from an influencing or communication mechanism i'm talking about a very core philosophical and you know belief and value truth that cannot be messed with right this is this goes beyond communication this is this is based on the entire um, uh, philosophy that you know that that just that cre that explains creation itself so you you never play with this word so honesty is not just the best policy it's the only policy now does this mean that there is no there's no another layer that that handles how you express honesty of course there is of course there is right there are many ways of saying the truth there's a million ways of saying the truth right and one should be smart enough and tactful tactful enough adaptive enough thoughtful enough to choose the right mechanism to utter the truth but never ever 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 at the expense of truth itself you see what i'm saying because because i've yes. because i've heard this you know in my corporate life in many many years ago you know that you have to use smoke and mirrors you know you have to in when you sell and marketing and persuasion and all of these things so that you i mean you can do that that tactically maybe it can work but if you're talking about something like enhancing the human condition something about uh, you know building enhancing relationship building a healthy and consistent relationship right remember the ultimate purpose is to survive and grow so how can you talk about survival if you're not talking about continuity and how can you talk about continuity if you're not talking about trust or how can you talk about trust if you're not talking about truth right and how can you talk about truth if you're not talking about honesty so the moment you you start messing with that right even if you sugarcoat it with with words you know smoke and mirrors and and and, and positive manipulation and persuasion all of that's fine do whatever you want just don't deviate from the truth be extremely eloquent and smart and poetic and the languages are full of beautiful words with many nuances right that you can use to deliver your message in the most you know smartest possible way but don't ever ever do it at the expense of the truth because then becomes manipulation and it might succeed short term but on the long term not only the other person will pay the price you will end up paying a very heavy price okay michael this has been amazing i mean i i, I wasn't expecting anything like that i have a couple more questions but these are more tactical and i think you gave me a deeper a deeper insight in a couple of things so i'd rather i'd pause here and also in the interest of time if there's anything that I 
remiss to ask you, which again, it could be anything that comes to your mind that is related to the topic. I'll be happy if you just kind of your, your final message to me over this video conference. I'll be happy to listen to you. If not, immense thank you for your uh, time and, and wonderful open sharing with me. And there's nothing else I can say except again, thank you once again. No worries. Thank you, Rashad. Uh, uh, good luck with the book. Um, as I said, when you write this book, just remember um, there's the technique element, as I said, and that's an entire science. You can spend, you can do PhDs on this one, and it should be respected, and you know, and applied, because it's a science, and people's thinking and experimentation and studies and research went into this. So learn as much as you can. I mean, your all your readers should learn as much as you, they can from this. But remember that uh, when you teach people communication, you are making them more effective and efficient through in using the most dangerous weapon ever. You know, if, 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 if the universe was created through a word, right? So you can imagine how much power that, you know, we're giving, you're giving people when you teach them how to become better communicators. So my wish to you is that make sure that this, that with the same message goes the perspective that this should be, because words, I mean, you, there's no point of altering empty words. And if your words are not empty, make sure that they're full of truth and they're full of whatever is intended to construct uh, and build. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it would hurt the people who are using these words and it would hurt the people who are receiving it and from how you know the, the if you look around you in the world um, if there's anything we need now is a positive constructive word that builds right that constructs and that enhances uh, the, the human condition and good communication is definitely a brilliant tool in helping do that Okay, well, once again, so wonderful to have seen you. I hope uh, you and your family also continue to be safe and sound. And uh, inshallah, well, I'll see you at some point in time in the future. Thank you so much. Good luck with the book. Uh, thank you very much, indeed. Thank you. Bye-bye.